The Hive Cluster is under attack. Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today, gonna be two Titans and Giants competing for our entertainment. It's gonna be Larva and Bisu here on Blockchain, top side. It's gonna be a Teal Zerg. It is Larva, you know him. And in the bottom left, Bisu needs no introduction. He's the Red Protoss player today. We've got Mini watching and as well as Light watching. Alright, so this is on blockchain. A very, very weird map. This is an RJB replay. Again, check him out at youtube.com slash at RJB underscore TV. Subscribe to him, leave a comment, let him know that Falcon sent you. It'll make him happy, and you owe him for all of the incredible replays that he sends me for me to cast, okay? Alright, oh, we're gonna start out with a proxy gateway from Bisu here today on blockchain. Holy cannoli. Yeah. Weird, weird, weird map. Drones and probes can get through this, but nothing else can. So you can expand here, but if these die, then you're in trouble, right? It's an island, but it can be a non-island pretty darn soon. We've got them at the 12 o'clock and the 6 o'clock and the 3 o'clock and the 9 o'clock. High ground all over the place here. Blockchain is, again, a very, very, very weird map. And double gate opening. Proxied from Bisu. And against a hatch first here from Larva. Okay. Uh, this, this should be interesting. Can Larva hold this off? Or is this a sneaky twofer? Huh? We'll have to wait and see, won't we? Holy smokes. So yeah, that pool's coming down now. Zealots are already on the way. Probe shows up. Normal probe scouting time. And actually cross-spawn scouted too. Man, Bisu got lucky with that one. Because Larva could be here. Could be here. Top left, bottom right. No, scouted top right first. I mean, it's as viable a scouting location as the other ones are. Just got lucky with it. So drone moving out. Let's see if the drone... Uh, the drone is probably not going to scout cross-spawn, but... Yep, going scouting that bottom right first, which means he won't see the Zealot. That's hoofing it across the map right now. Holy cannoli. So another drone coming out. Is he going to go for a quick third? Man, I mean, not now, because the Zealot just showed up. He's like, oh, never mind. Plan aborted. No third base. Holy crap. All right. So we're just going hack to start hacking away at the natural base. Pool's not done yet. Zealots can't do any. I mean, Zerglings can't do anything about this because they don't exist. Three sets are on the way. Now, is this one proxy? Nope, it's two, because guess what? A second zealot has arrived. <laughs> oh, man. I, I guess we're pulling some drones here. A third zealot is here now. Trying to throw up a sunken, but that thing gets focused down by the zealots immediately. And shut down another sunken attempted here. Zealots, it can actually distract. The zerglings can distract against the zealots here. Uh, it's a pretty tight engagement. That overlord is blocking our vision a little bit. Okay, so all the zealots, but oh my gosh, two zealots are still alive. A third zealot is coming in. Mm, we're just distracting. We're willing to sacrifice our lives to allow this sunken to come up here. Zealots are bypassing, taking two shots. Wow, two shots from the sunken, getting into the main base where there are lings, but no sunkens. Zealots are pretty healthy in this situation. Has to make more and more zerglings to try to deal with this. More zealots showing up. Just kind of bypassing the sunken, taking one shot apiece. Bisu is so darn aggressive right now. This is amazing. Yeah, Lings are just not getting great trades out. Drones are trying to get hits off here. The main base is taking direct shots. I mean, trying to attack eggs, which isn't really going to work here. Bisu. Oh, Zealot down, but there are three remaining inside the main base. Just absolutely br brutal. Another Zealot shows up. These two are injured. This guy's fresh as a daisy. And, oh no, God, four zealots inside the house. Okay, well, one, three. One of them is really, really injured too, though. This is so touch and go right now, it's insane. Good target firing here from Larva, making sure that the injured zealot is the one that's taking the hits here from these lings. We're still coming, man. We are still making two zealots at a time. Bisu has killed Zerg players with this strategy a thousand hundred million times in his career. 
But I don't know. I don't know if Larva is going to go down to this. It's 9 to 16 workers in favor of the Protoss, which seems real bad. Because, yeah, like, <laughs> Protoss can do this without sacrificing their entire economy. You know? It's kind of crazy, but it's true. Okay, so all the Zealots are dead. New ones showing up. Again, traditionally. Oh, now yeah, backing out. Yeah, Lings are. They're like, hey, if you want to come in here, we will make sure you're taking sunken hits while getting wailed on by Lings. So how about you don't come in here, my dude? Yeah, I think we might done, be done with Zealot production. This guy heading home. These two guys heading home. Ling's on the counterattack. The Zealots will be needed back home for defense purposes. Forge coming up. We don't have time to do anything else. Let's get a Forge up. Let's get a Cannon up down here or possibly up here and try to stay alive against the incoming Ling's. Of which, I mean, there's not a million. There's five of them on their way down here. In the meantime, I think, is Larva going to be droning? Mm, production tab says Overlords because he's supply blocked. But I'm sure after that, he'll be making some drones for sure. Yeah, super aggressive. Crazy aggressive stuff here. All right, so one Zealot, two probes holding the line against the incoming Zergling horde. And by horde, I mean it was fivelings, and now it's three. So that's not going to work out incredibly well. All right, Cybercore coming in. One base here from Bisu, two bases from Larva. It's still 20 to 10 workers in favor of the Protoss player. Third base coming up 12 o'clock here. Larva managed to sneak a drone over there in amongst all of this chaos and try to get a third base up. Production tap, we're still making zealots, man. Visu, Visu, do you think do you think it's possible to win this thing with zealots from this point? Well, not if both your gateways get depowered, which uh, they are. There's enough links here. I mean, they're going to fight the zealots. Hang on. All right. Maybe the zealots. Nah, nah. Zealots are not winning this battle, so just, yeah. Just, oh my gosh, another zealot popped out. Wow, the power was remaining for those gateways for another couple seconds. And yeah, those zealots win this battle here. More Ling's coming down. He's like, I really need to shut down this production. Because these are the gateways that Bisu has right now. I mean, Bisu's obviously making more gateways at home. Yeah, making another gateway at home. Making a Stargate off of one base at home. This is nuts. This is an absolutely insanely good start here to this ZVP featuring Larva and Bisu. 23 to 12 workers. It's about a 10 worker lead for Bisu every time we look at it. But the more workers that come up, the less of a discrepancy that is for the Zerg player. So Larva's okay. He's bleeding. He's injured. He's lost a lot of Zerglings, but he's killed a lot of Zealots too. He's getting a Hydralisk Den. Corsair production has begun from Bisu, so... Obviously, that Hydra Den is going to be what you want right now because you are pretty far from getting a Spire. No Lair, no Lair on the way. Whew, that was the first seven minutes of this game. This is crazy good. So three Zealots moving out. I mean, Dragoon production has begun, but man, it's been nothing but Zealot production pretty consistently here from Bisu for the first seven or eight minutes of this game. Adding Dragoons into the production, taking a second base at eight minutes here is Bisu. Third base is up and rolling from Larva. 27 to 19 workers. Larva catching up an economy. Corsair shows up just as a Hydra pops. And the Corsair's got to get out of here. Into the main base. There's a Hydra Lisk in there too. And there are no Overlords to kill. So Corsair is like rats. I thought maybe the Hydra Den would be late. But nope, Larva's playing this pretty darn well. Again, Larva's an elite Zerg player. Bisu possibly... Possibly... Probably and possibly the best Protoss player in all the world. My brain does that sometimes. It's like, here are two words that you could say next in this sentence that would work exactly the same. And then my mouth tries to say both of them at the same time because, well, neither of them's better, necessarily. And then I go, bleh, and I go, possibly, which is not a word. Hmm, I think there's a, there is actually an English word that describes that phenomenon. I don't remember what it is, though. Anyway, ah, air weapons coming in. We know how good air weapons is with Corsairs against a Zerg player. Killing those overlords, killing any mutas that are foolish enough to pop out of eggs in this situation. Lings are going to try to knock down this assimilator, which actually makes this wall tighter. If I remember my walling off mechanics here with assimilators and Brood War. Yeah, so if these are both dead, then that actually creates a tighter wall. If these eggs are gone, I guess. If the eggs are here, it's still a solid wall. It's, like, it's not tighter because it can't be. Um, I guess, I don't know. Can workers go through there now? Maybe they... Uh, someone has to explain this to me in the comments. So cannons up here just in case a bunch of hydras show up. I mean, we don't have the other 
you know, we don't have any gateways in the front there because, well, we have one gateway and it's inside the main base. Wow, fast robo support bay here too. So we're going Reaver Shenanigans, Shuttle in production. This is a really good map for Reaver Shenanigans. Super good. You can drop up here on this high ground, fire around on this mineral line. It can't be seen unless you already have units up there or high ground vision in general, right? Super annoying stuff. Corsairs continuing to be just a pest. Good scouting on them. Macro hatch, spire, second gas, larva. Pretty much back to normal now. It's 38 to 29 workers. Again, a smaller percentage discrepancy than it was when Bisu was up 20 to 10 workers, right? That's the maths. We know the maths. We're pretty smart that way. Reaver in production. Shuttle movement on the way. Tasteless calls them speed shuttles in his ASL broadcast. So we'll call them speed shuttles here as well. And yeah, first Reaver out. 10 minutes, considering how aggressive this game has been thus far from Bisu. A 10 minute Reaver is pretty darn fast indeed. Hydra scampering around, trying to find Corsairs, trying to get some scouting information off. Not really going to work out super well for ya. That shuttle must have got caught by these Hydras out here somewhere. Huh. Took some damage all as well. Yeah, first Reaver down here. Corsair is hanging out over the Nexus. A safe place for them in case Scourge are wandering about. If you want to park the Corsair somewhere, that's pretty much where you have to go. Macro hatch to the third. This is just opening up a potential fourth base over here at the three o'clock position from Larva. He's in macro mode right now, and he does have the mutas. Okay, son of a gun. What is with Zerg players being like, you know what's cool in ZVP when the enemy has a bunch of Corsairs and they have plus one attack is a mutalisk. So yeah, I love a good mutalisk. Like, dude, I love you. I do. I like you a lot, Larva, but seriously, man, it's not... <gasps> Super frustrating. It's not that it's an immediate loss for Zerg, but crikey. All right, so this is a really strong attack. Reaver shows up. All the drones have to evacuate from the third base. The mutas are like, can we shut this down? We can kill one of the shuttles. That was neat. Way to go, guys. Scourge flock. All right. Well, nope, didn't kill all the Corsairs. Mutas can't do anything about this. And the third base is going to die. All right, cool. So Larva gets knocked down behind because instead of having a bunch of Hydras, he's got Mutas instead, which did he just let the... Okay, the Corsairs got out of position for absolutely no reason there, and the Mutas got an angle on the Reaver and killed it. So, okay, both shuttles down, Reaver down, but two hatches down. And the Mutas, I don't know. They killed a shuttle, I guess. They killed a Reaver. That's nice, too. Look at this. Third base coming up here from Bisu. I guess this is the new third base from Larva. Uh, look. So, yes, the Mutalisks did kill that Reaver, but I think that was a mistake from Bisu more than Larva getting anything done. If the Corsairs had parked over the Reaver like they should have done instead of getting sucked over this way for no reason, then I think the Reaver is still alive. And the Mutas don't dare to come in there to try to pick it off. They're going to die. They're, I mean, a lot of them are already dead. I just don't get it. I mean, it's blind is what it is, right? I think he did this before he knew the course there, how many Corsairs there were, and they had plus one attack. So he's going to come back in and try to do this little thing where he pretends it's a ZVT. You know, a little Muta stacking option here. And then one Corsair is like, how about I just shoot you in the face? And how about all of these Scourge get absolutely nothing done, and now the Mutas have to retreat... Yeah, I mean, the answer to Corsairs is not Mutas. It's really not. Unless it's just a couple Mutas. Look. Or uh, uh, Corsairs. Look, if you have like three Corsairs and they don't have plus one attack, sure. You can show up with Mutas. You can kind of split around them. You can take them down. We've seen that before. But when it's, you know, five, six, seven Corsairs and they have plus one attack, that's not really the case anymore, is it? 
Fourth base is on the way here from Larva. 12 o'clock base uh, is coming back here from Larva, including the macro hatch. He's restoring it to its once former glory. DTs are out because why not? Why not make a DT on this map? They're really good at actually swiping through these eggs. Because the eggs have tons of armor and mutas do, or <laughs> DTs do big swings on those eggs. Wipe them out. That's why these hiders are here. In okay, case something shows up over this way, that would be a bad time. Corsairs, man. Hunting, 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 hunting. It's not a supply block for larva, but it feels like it's only a matter of time. DT says, excuse me, gentlemen. I'm coming down this way into your drone line where there are no overlords because the Corsairs came through here a second ago. Dude. All right. So look. Look, look, look. I just feel like the way this game is gone, Bisu is so ahead right now. It's not even funny. This K, okay, this DT casually has nine kills. Nine. He just wiped out the entire economy of this new fourth base from Larva. Done. No drones exist here whatsoever. And then the DT's like, peace. I'll be back later, I guess. Man, Archons. Reavers in production here. Bisu on three bases has everything he needs. Yep, Larva's up to four. It's 42 to 40 workers in favor of the Protoss. Another Overlord down. This DT is like, oh, I heard what happened with DT over this way. He got nine kills. Can I get nine kills? Not if you come in here, you can't. That's not good for you. Tell me that's a. Tell me this is going to be a spore. Tell me there's going to be static defense detection in this game, from our Zerg player. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Hydra's running, and then he knows an Overlord's coming, so the DT pulls back. Such a smart DT. Such a smart, smart as a whip DT here. All right, man. Speed lots have arrived. What's that? You made a lot of hydralisks. Cool. We're gonna make a ton. Of speed lots, we're gonna bring Reavers, we're gonna bring Archons, we're gonna bring Corsairs to kill your overlords and supply block you in this time of absolute trial. You boy. Alright, man. Reavers in the house. Larva is not supply blocked, but part of that is because he's losing a lot of Hydralisks to these Reavers, man. Archon, not great against Hydras, as he dies, obviously, and Larva is able to bust out. He's able to break out of there. He had enough Hydras that even though Hydras weren't exactly what you wanted there, it was enough. Sometimes that happens. Uh, this DT is dead. I love you, DT, but you overextended, and now you're dead. Good job, 9-kill DT. You're awesome. So still 3 base in it here from Bisu. He's got a, is he taking center? Bisu. Oh, the supply block on, on our guy Larva is real right now. Dude, these Corsairs are just... Having the absolute time of their lives, dude. Larva. So Larva's down 110 to 86 supply, but it's supply blocked into next week because he only has 62 available supply. Bisu is just kind of teaching the youngster a lesson. And I don't know if Bisu, I mean, I'm assuming Bisu's older than Larva because Bisu is a legend from the olden times. Uh, hiders are like, are you taking center? How about we just make sure you don't feel comfortable taking center by sending hiders down here and wiping out your pylon? Sounds great, actually. Larva, less supply blocked than he was. Still supply blocked at 94 supply. Now, not supply blocked anymore. Barely. Okay. Well, by three supply. So this is a 30 supply lead right now for the Protoss player. He's got the speed lots. He's got the plus two attack. He's, I mean, and against just pure Hydra, these zealots are going to be worth their weight in gold. Hydra's pulling back. Lurker's in the house. That's what we're here for. That's what Larva's been needing for a minute now, is these Lurkers. There was no doubt he was going for it, but now they've arrived. Reaver can break. Reaver can break this Lurker shenanigan stuff. Oh, Reaver gets picked off. A lot of Hiders died for that. A lot of Bothans died for those plans. Drop! Uh, not really enough of a... Oh, maybe enough of a drop. That's a lot of Hydras. They got plus two attack. And from this angle, they can take down this Nexus. The probes are fighting. That's never good. Probes are not... Oh, actually, hold on. The probes are kind of winning this battle. They killed every Hydra but one. On the other side, Beast has decided he's just going to go for it. Um, it looks like he lost his other Reaver there. Unfortunately, more Lurkers come down. Zealots have to back out. Larva is staying alive in a way that I am not really comfortable with him being alive right now. It's real bad. Did every Hydra die to probes during that? That seems impossible. And yet, 
And yet, I don't know what else killed those Hydras. Must have been them probes fighting. Them probes. Not bad fighters, I guess. 111 to 95 supply here. Larva has kind of stabilized, right? He's got Lurker Tech out, which is humongous until more Dragoons exist. And, of course, Beast is making five of those at a time. More Reavers happening. Mine is, I mean, look, man, we got the Reaver Tech. No reason to stop making Reavers in this game. I, like, unless for some reason Larva just went, like, mass, mass, mass Mutalisk in the craziest tech switch of all time against this many Corsairs. Yeah, at least Scourge. Just worthless. Worthless, unless Bisu sucks. Like, unless Bisu... I, I don't know how these Corsairs die to that many Scourge. I don't. Mmm, beautiful Reaver hit. Corsairs sacrificing their lives a little bit there so that the Reaver could come down and get some big hits off on those Hydras. <sighs> Heads up play there from Bisu for sure. More speed lots are here. Obs gets picked out of the sky. Now there's no Obs in this comp. Now it is kind of kind of blindly storm, or you know, take educated guesses where these lurkers are based on the spine extrusions. Another drop. More Reaver stuff with that speed shuttle doing what it does. Kind of surprised Bizu hasn't gone for a fourth base here yet. Here at 21 minutes, seems dicey to me. Psionic Storm, the enemy of all things Zerg, and in fact, all things StarCraft, I would say. Hey, look, finally enough Scourge to win a Corsair battle. That was not... Oh my gosh! I was kidding! I was joking, Larva! I did not mean for you to go into Mass Mutalisk, I really didn't! Okay. Well, he's gonna pick off High Templar, which is the best use of Mutalisk to the 20-minute mark of his EVP I can come up with. Possibly the only use of Mutalisk at a 20 minute mark of his EVP I can come up with. Look at these High Templar dying. And the Reaver died too. Remember when I was like, ah, Reavers aren't viable if there's Mutas around? And by golly, I was right. That's another dead uh, High Templar. If it gets focused, they're just kind of just fighting against these Dragoons here. But all right, the High Templar dies anyway. A little bit of non, non focused fire there, I suppose. <laughs> and all the mutas died. All right. Well, good job, mutas. You killed a lot of High Templar and a Reaver. That is not nothing. Dude, look at Bisu taking center. Look at Bisu taking center. He's like, this is my fourth base. This is where I'm going to fourth base. How close are you to Dark Swarm, Larva? And Larva's like, well, I don't have a Queen's Nest yet. So oh, it's, it's a while. It's going to be a while. The Dragoons are like, sweet. We have sufficient upgrades with plus three attack to fight pretty much anything you have right now. I mean, like, 87 Lings showing up would shut this down, but otherwise, I don't know. It's doing all right. Gonna try to get some Lurkers up on this high ground, but that's why there's a cannon up here and a cannon down here and nothing up here. Could maybe sneak a Lurker down and burrow it in this location and get away with it. Center exists. Muta flock. Hey, you thought that was all the Mutas? He's making more! Larva, you insane person! It's just so crazy, it might work. Actually, what's the phrase there? It's it's so crazy, it just might work. I think that's what it is. Ah, so we killed the cannon on the high ground. Lurker on the high ground now. Denying all mining at half of this base. Beautiful stuff. Dude, Larva is crazy. He is... He crazy, and I kind of like it. Who else would be this nuts to go with this many mutalisks at this stage of the game? It's 11 mutas. They, they have plus one carapace. That's nice. No additional in, uh, investments are coming into them in the form of upgrades, which is not as nice. Probe snipe. High Templar snipe, High Templar snipe. Wait, missed that High Templar. Taking shots from cannons and dragoons from all over the place, though. Larva's up 120 to 99 supply. He's up 48 to 40 workers. This Muta tech switch has been bonkers good for him. It really has. I mean, it helps that a couple of Corsairs died to Scourge over here. Obviously, big deal. 
do this lurker across the wall scenario. It's not as scary as a siege tank across the wall, which is I don't I don't think a Protoss would take the center base against a Terran. But you know, lurker across the wall, scary stuff for sure. Speed shuttle in a lot of trouble here, but it's got DTs all over the place. And the DTs are going to get approximately nothing done because obviously there's overlords down. Speed overlords have existed for a while now. <laughs> Lurker spine, so intimidating, man. Bottom right base taken by Larva too. That's pretty good. So he's on five bases. Bisu's on four, including the center. He's not taking any gas, but the mineral income is being very nice for him right now. Muta flock of 11, continuing just to shark around and find whatever they can do here at this stage of the game at 25 minutes. All right, so annoying Lurker Harass gets shut down. Probes can happily mine from the right side of the center base of Bisu right now. Lurker is trying to do what they can. Muta's, I'm not sure they're finding a ton of action said they're not really dying either one muta in this flock is down so we're at 10 instead of 11 but man hit that like button if you're enjoying this game what kind of an unorthodox zvp this has been not like crazy weird not like a weird fun tag which if you don't know what weird fun is check out my weird fun playlist on the channel you're not going to regret it it is definitely the craziest stuff i cast just non-standard non-meta starcraft it's nuts i love it I haven't had one in a while. Yeah. Remember what I said when there's no Dark Swarm? The Dragoons will fight against your Hydras to a certain extent. They will wreck your Lurkers. Although coming up this little narrow ramp with a big Lurker spread concave is pretty intimidating stuff. I gotta say. Here are the Mutas. They're helping. Dodging Storms. I don't know if Bisu can get up here with Dragoons. Maybe if there were a ton of Zealots they could run up, but... Good snipe on her. I mean, Ob snipes. Easier when there's not an army directly protecting all of them. And Larva's like, you know what I need is more Mutas. Gotta dissuade Bisu from going Reavers, I guess. Should Bisu be working on increasing his Corsair count? I kind of feel like he should. Larva's investing a lot into Mutalisks right now. And I'm not sure that's what he needs to be doing. Where this guy's trying to go. He seems lost. I think he was trying to sneak up here, but again, I think he was blocked off by the fact the assimilators are gone. Speed shuttle trying to storm drop. Does get a storm off. Catches some of this mutalisk, but there is so much mutalisk. And so little investment in upgrades for the mutalisks. Like, Larva has made more mutas in his EVP than I've seen in a long time, and he's just not. Giving them plus one attack, not giving them plus two armor. It's a little bit confounding, to be honest with you. So Bisu's mined out of his main and his natural. His third base is getting mined out. His fourth base, you know, should be a while before it's gone, but he should be expanding here again. I'm a little bit surprised he hasn't expanded more than this at 28 minutes, but I guess this game started out pretty aggressive and has continued to be pretty aggressive. And this is not the kind of game you just sit back and macro up to six bases before anything really happens. That is, this is the opposite of that. Woo, get some Maelstrom, get some Dark Archon shenanigans all up in here. I guess if your opponent has a lot of mutas, not a bad idea. I'm trying to think of what he needs to do here. Dragoons fight pretty well. Storm is okay against mutas. They can storm dodge fairly easily. Corsairs are good. And Maelstrom Storm combo against those mutas would be absolutely sick too. Yeah. Static defense. Less of a concern at this stage of the game against the plus three gateway units. Loving it. Loving it a lot. Another drop from Larva coming down the left side. Just going to doom drop this base. Okay, all the Hydras are here, Marge. They have 2-2 upgrades. These cannons are not great against 2-2 Hydras. And this base is going to die. The good news for Bisu, the silver lining, is that this base is almost mined out anyway, so whatever. But Larva um, just took away one of your two mining bases, period. Does this count for two bases? It kind of does, doesn't it? So fine. Bisu is technically on two bases. But this just gets absolutely wiped out. Trying to break in here, Sunken Town. Sunken Hydra Town is a tough nut to break, honestly. Unless you have a lot of Reavers in Storm, which... Yeah, kind of. Kind of, Bisu does here. I don't know, man. 
The hiders are willing to sacrifice all of their lives to kill that reaver because as soon, there you go. As soon as that reaver's down, it saves countless of hider lives in the future, and they're just looking to the future for that. Finally, Larva's getting a hive here at 29 minutes, which is just super late. Super crazy late. I think BC is trying to end this game, I say, question mark. Not really expanding. Kind of needs to. But nah. Larva's at 50 drones. He's up overall supply on you. The there are better upgrades. Well, I don't know. Now that there's plus one armor for the gateway units, I'm not sure there's better, up better upgrades for the Zerg anymore. Hydra's just continuing to pour on in here. Not having the greatest of times. But if they don't fight, who will at this stage? And I, yeah, so I think Bisu was trying to win there, and it just did not go as well as he wanted to. Larva's economy was too strong, and it's Larva economy, so of course it was. High Templar snipe. Hydras, can they? Oh, Hydras can fit through. Oh, because the assimilators are up. And two drones go down with that High Templar's last gasp. Its last words were, screw you, drones. Blah. And then he died. Ooh, free ob snipes. Although the storm, okay, didn't really target the obs there. Never mind. Probably should have actually. Where are my mutalisks, by the way? Did they all die trying to defend this base? Oh my gosh. Remember when there were like ten mutalisks flying around and being crazy annoying and stuff, and now they're gone. I kind of want to rewind and check that out. Where did my mutalisks go? Have they done their job? Did they kill enough mutalisks and now they can rest? Is that the whole plan? Man, Bisu's been pressuring here and not expanding. Like, not at all. Here's another drop. That's a big, that's a big one. Oh, that's a big one. Knocking Larva down to 45 drones. Yeah, but Larva's got the six o'clock base too and Bisu's just not expanding. Okay, okay. Top left coming up from Bisu. Entirely and completely scouted by the Zerg player. Like if nothing shows up here, I don't know what to tell you. I love that this drone is has been told to go somewhere, but is he trying to, like, glitch it through? I think he's trying to glitch this drone. I don't know. Maybe he's not. Either way, BC says, okay, we got to start whittling down these bases of our Zerg opponent real, real fast. My right, Templar gets a final storm off and two storms off, actually. Takes a bunch of hiders with him down into the underworld of death. Okay, so Larva's attempt at like an 8th base over here doesn't work, but he still has the bottom right and he still has the 6 o'clock. And this base gets cancelled because there's a ton of Hydras coming up here and there's absolutely nothing to defend it from these Hydras. So, look, Bisu taking center is super rad. 100% very cool stuff by him. <coughs> but in the end... I don't think I'm muted for that cough. I apologize. But in the end, Larva just has more bases, more workers, more ability to produce stuff. Oh, man. This speed shuttle dying. Oh, with four High Templar in it. That was tough. That was really tough. All right, top left base down. Are these hiders going to be able to get out of here? Uh, no. I think they're all going to die. They could put up a good fight against the Protoss that's showing up here. But, oh, hang on. Maybe if they get shuttled over. Quick. Quick. Shuttle. Unload is so slow. Unload. 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 Get over here. Save the other three. The Overlord's like, nah, are you kidding? Absolutely not. Okay, finally, Bisu expanding top left, but his center base is in a lot of trouble. Are there enough cannons? Apparently, there were enough cannons to chase these Hydras off, and maybe some storms got tossed down, too, in the meantime. 
That High Templar does have enough energy for a storm at the moment, and another High Templar exists here as well. Yeah, Extractor depleted, just getting about two, not about, it's exactly two Vespine gas per trip now. Yeah, Snipe, slowing down the gas income of BC is going to be great. Like, at this stage, Zealots are certainly going to cut it anymore. If you're going to deal with this, it's got to be Storm and Reavers, and that's gas-heavy stuff. So it's 124 to 122 supply. Worker count is 47 to 39 in favor of Larva. But man, just more available bases and sources of income here for Larva right now. Larva trying to expand down here to the expansion bottom right spawn location again. BCU shuts that one down, but another big Hydra army coming up top left to shut down BCU's newest source of income. I know I say that phrase a lot, but it is true. Newest sources of income are so insanely important in StarCraft. Holding this is killer and absolutely crucial for BCU, but I don't know if he can do it. It's too many Hydras. And it is. The 2-2 Hydra is too strong. They're working on plus three attack. Leave them alone. Oh, hang on, hang on. Zealots coming up to try to buy time for this Nexus to stay alive. Probe's willing to sacrifice their lives for this Nexus too. Apparently. Hang on, hang on. Ah, oh, Lurker's on the ramp just buying precious few seconds for this Nexus to die. And it's going to die. Every one of these hiders is going to get obliterated, but Bisu just lost his newest source of income, his newest base. It's gone. Larva still has his two, his three. His last three newest sources of income are still alive and still kicking and still active. Meanwhile, bisu has been on this center base for like 15 minutes. Um, I mean, there's apparently a lot of minerals here. That said, we're at triple digits for a lot of these, which means they're not going to last very long. That gas geysers depleted this one has a thousand mineral or a thousand gas in it it's not actively being mined from right now this is some scrappy stuff man top left base getting replanted from bisu really important stuff bisu trying to bust through this but every time larva sees it coming and shuts it down he hasn't lost a battle in this screen in this area for the entire game observers important for keeping track of troop movements for larva Eider's kind of holding this high ground over the 6 o'clock base of Larva for the very purpose of preventing storm drops from getting up here and ruining everybody's day. Uh, that said, that's a good storm position, but kind of hurt your own zealots a little bit there too, bud. More Hydra engagements. Focus the High Templar. Don't worry about anything else. But, I mean, are there more High Templar where those came from? Yeah, always. That is always the case. Larva using these drops again. Remember what I said about drops? They just make everything better. Drops are good by every race in every matchup. Dude, the storms, though. Yeah, sure. Maybe a storm's going to wipe out your drop entirely and negate it. But you got to keep trying regardless. That's how I feel about it. That's my motto. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. The second gas here in the center going to get wiped out by Larva again. Uh, storm drop. Six o'clock takes out a couple drones. Still 42 drones to 35 probes here. But top left running. Bisu's breathing a huge sigh of relief that this base exists. Because it didn't exist a second ago. Yeah, speed shuttle. Not actually as speedy as it might want to be. This, yeah. Dead. High Templar, both dead. Quick, turn into an Archon. But guess what? 
also dead. Is there a really... Uh, you know what? I just realized. Maelstrom got researched? We never actually saw a Dark Archon. I'm wondering if a Dark Archon got a Maelstrom off on those Amutas and they got stormed. Okay. After this game, I'm going to go back and look through the replay and see if I can find out what happened to those Mutas. If it was an amazing Maelstrom, I'm going to show it to you at the end of the game. How about that? So if you want to see it, stick around. Or maybe there wasn't a Maelstrom and the Mutas just died to cannons. Who knows at this point? I certainly don't. Maybe RJB does because he screened it for me. Mm, actually, nothing in these Overlords. It was like a fake drop for no purpose. Bisu taking the spawn natural, top left. Okay. Because he knows this isn't going to last forever. He's feeling those minerals drain out on him. We're just doing this without defilers. Larva, have we learned this lesson yet? We're at, gosh darn, 40 minutes in this game. And you have thrown down s nothing. Nothing for Dark Swarms. I'm not sure Plague's even researched right now. These dropper lords? Yeah, these are dropper lords. They have... I don't know where they're going. They have some kind of a plan, though. Dropper lords. Okay, you just dropped lurkers into cannon storm range. Okay, that was a horrible waste of lurkers right there, sir. Hyder's trying to bust in, but man, there's two reavers. Zealots. I mean, high templar. Uh-uh. You're not busting in there. Not at all. This drop is continuing to move. Larva's actually supply blocked. After losing a couple overlords recently. Hey, look, consumes on the way. Larva's decided that what we need in this game is Dark Swarm and some Plague, maybe. Sweet. Bisu's working on shield upgrades. Still doesn't have full armor upgrades, but whatever. Okay, here we go. So this gets scouted. Army comes back to deal with it. Good observer position. The observer pays for it, but saved the life of this base, possibly. Very possibly. Still more speed shuttle stuff coming down here to the south. And Scourge ready to nail it. As per usual, when the Scourge show up, the shuttles just have to run. And free Scourge death. Oh, yeah. Um, so hiders are trying to get in here, and they really would have if Psionic Storm just didn't exist in Brood War. <laughs> that was crazy. That was absolutely insane, the number of storms that went off, and every Hydra died. Okay, big Lurker Ball with no Dark Swarm protection. These Dragoons are like, I don't think you understand how non-intimidating that is. Pick up the lurkers. Put them some. Okay, no. Oh, you already got lurkers in you. That's fine. Understandable then. I'm not sure if Larva's trying to take down center here or what. Yeah, I mean, this is a great map for drops. It makes sense that Larva would be getting drops here and using them effectively. Because obviously, BC's doing the exact same thing. This is a knockdown Dragomount PvZ. I don't think anyone's been at 200 supply the entire game. No one's even been really close, I don't think another unload holy crap hydra is just dropping all over this base not enough with the reavers not enough with the cannons high templar attacks from the high ground trying to save it but this base is gonna die army responding from bisu can they save this nexus i don't think so it's too much plus three hydra nexus down getting this top left base not happening but the newest source of income of bisu just died that's key that is the key to this whole attack did a lot of Hydras go down? Yes. Did you kill some probes and make sure that Bisu never has... Well, 
Doesn't have access to his newest source of income right now. Yes, absolutely. Truth, truth be told. All right, finally. Storm right, storm left. Oh, brutal. Larva knocked down to 49 drones. Like... Every time he tries getting up to like 50, 55, 60 workers, he gets knocked down a peg because of Bisu's amazing speed shuttle High Templar Storm drops. Guess who's back into Mutas? Larva is. Larva's back into Mutalisks, everyone. So tired of the High Templar. But look, there's tons of Dragoons and Archons and stuff. I don't know about this. I'm not convinced this is the proper choice for you, my friend. Well, let's figure it out together, shall we? DT sneaking around down to the south. Enough Hydras and Overlords that... Yeah. I mean, you're all trying to mimic the 9-kill DT from earlier in the game, but... Maybe he is not to be mim mimicked. Maybe you just can't be him. He's non-reproducible. He's a one-of-a-kind. In this game, anyway. So, do these guys still have... The yeah. Uh, plus one Flyer Carapace. No attack upgrades. No further armor. Just ye old plus one Flyer Carapace on these Mutas. I guess maybe, I don't know, someone's done the math a long time ago that says you really don't need plus attack upgrades on Mutas if you're just sniping High Templar the whole time. I, I guess I can understand that idea. Bezu's probably like, what? How in the name of everything do you have 11 Mutalisks at 46 minutes? Maybe could have two volleyed down that cannon if these guys had plus two attack. I don't know. I don't know the math on Mutalisk attacks. I'm sure there is some. Obviously, there's a lot of math in StarCraft in general. A couple probes getting sniped. The ones harvesting from expired and depleted gas geysers. More Reavers in production. More High Templar in production. If these Mutas somehow turn into, like, the key to victory here for Larva today, I just got to tip my hat to him. Nobody does this. Nobody's like, we're at 46 minutes. You know what we need is 11 mutas with plus zero attack. And plus one armor. Look at him just killing a reaver. No biggie. Reaver down. Hydralisks, you can thank me later. And then look at this. He hydra drops in the main of Bisu because the mutas cleared out the cannons and the reavers in the general vicinity. Holy crap, that was smart. Now he's bringing down a million more hydras. Oh... So we look, he's buying time for the hiders inside the main base to snipe really important tech structures. I'm not really focusing on stuff here, but I really feel like killing the robotic support bay would be cool. He's trying, kind of. Not really focusing it, but you know what I mean. The Hydra's finally getting storm as the High Templar make it all the way down to the bottom left here. So yeah, robotic support bay gets killed. I guess the robotics bay gets killed here. Uh, the observatory is going to go down. Again, it's not particularly tight. Target firing by the Hydras down here in the main base, but that's okay. High Templar getting sniped by the Mutas. Trying not to take Archon shots in the meantime, but it's a little bit tough. And this Muta flock is down to six from the 11 there they were earlier. But Bisu's losing his entire main base. He's down 149 to 95 supply, 48 to 36 workers. Larva! I think Larva's doing it. Okay, Bisu's on two mining bases. Larva's on s basically two mining bases. So the math's not great for Larva, but killing the entire main base, all the production facilities and tech structures therein of our guy is amazing. Bisu is forced to kind of start over from scratch here. He got a Templar Archives up here in the, the top left, so that's good. But uh, he's lost all of his gateways. He's got four he's running on now. Robotics facility has got to be rebuilt. Cyber core has got to re be rebuilt before he makes another robo. This game is crazy, but I think, I think Larva's got it in hand. The 46 minute Mutalisk tech switch seems to have done it here for our Zerg player. I, I'm astounded. I am astounded at how well this is working. It's Got more. Oh my gosh. He's going for a guardian clincher in this game. Who does that? Who does that? <sighs> a 
So Larva's decided I'm going to win this thing with Guardians. A PVZ where the clinching move. What the Dark Argus? Dark Archon energy upgrade. I don't... I don't get it, man. You don't have any Dark Archon. He's making four. He's trying for Maelstrom. He's like, do you have any Storm available? Obviously, yes. There's a bunch there. Ah, uh, Guardians. They'd be so much better if they weren't slow as molasses. A lot of units would be improved by being faster in StarCraft. It's very speed dependent in a lot of ways. Okay, so I like this. Just a few garden uh, Guardians poking. Look at this. Dark Archon production here. All right. So not enough energy for a Maelstrom yet, but we might get one here. Like I said, there's infinite storms available, so I'm not sure these Guardians are going to get anything done. Larva really wants to win right here, though. Hey, the first Dark Swarm of the day at 50 minutes. Are you kidding me? Dark Archons wander over here, uh, completely unsupported by anything, without the energy to do anything. What are you guys up to exactly? Get out of there. Just revealing yourselves to the Zerg, I guess. Plague is on the way. This is crazy. This is truly an insane attack right now. I, I mean, the Lings have Adrenal. The Lings have no attack upgrades at all, which seems questionable. Man, if this base dies, it's going to be a tough row to hoe here for Bisu. And he's just he's not in a position to save it. There's only Zerg down here. Protoss owns the high ground, yep. But there's only Zerg down here. Cannon can only do so much. Lurkers dying all over the place. Guardians just tossing down, you know, there's zero upgraded attacks. <laughs> More Lurkers joining the party here, trying to get on top of this ramp. There can't be much more Storm now. Could there be? And then there was. And this bottom left base would get killed if Larva decided to attack it, which he's kind of not. Not really decided to do that. It's 147 to 85 supply. It certainly seems like Larva's got this thing in the bag. But what? Are, it's 52 minutes. All right, coming down the ramp with Archons, with Dark Archons. Dark Archons have accomplished literally nothing at this point. That's okay. They still have some time to accomplish more than literally nothing. Zero attack lings? I just don't know if it's putting that much fear into, Lolo, into Bisu's mind. He's okay. He's dropping lings right on top of everything, though. It's just... He's relying pretty heavily on Zerglings when they don't have attack upgrades. I'm going to keep repeating that because it's so important right now. Maelstrom on a Guardian. Archons wipe it out. It's not a Maelstrom Storm combo, but a Maelstrom Archon combo is pretty good nevertheless. I think that's my favorite sound in StarCraft. Just the home of the Maelstrom. So deep. It's nice. Dude, it's 91 to 87 supply right now. And Bisu has fewer workers, which means he has bigger army supply. But Hydra's in the tech switch here from Larva. I like it. So Dark Archon's getting focused and exploded. But DT Zealot Archon pushing these Hydra's back. Beat ah, Larva taps out. What? Bisu is our winner in 54 minutes. And one second. What? The comeback. The comeback. Wow. Bisu. You madman. 
He's got 73 supply right now and wins. That includes seven Zealots, two Archons, a Dark Templar. Okay, two more Archons and another Zealot. A couple more up here too. But that's it, man. He's not close to maxed out. He's got a base he's mining from, which is quickly running out of resources, we can tell here. I, I mean, he's reestablishing a second base right now, but like, this is getting an epic tag. I cannot believe that Bisu managed to come back and win that. I can't. I thought for sure Larva was just kind of playing with his food. He had like a 60-70 supply lead. He shows up with Guardians. La, 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 la. Got a lot of hiders. Got a lot of lings. We're going to drop all over you and kill this base and get up here and kill. Nope. Bisu was patient. Bisu defended till the very end. Bisu got some amazing trades at the end there. The plus zero attack lings were not going to do the work that was needed to be done to win this game. If only Larva had invested in, I don't know, plus one and two and three attack lings, it had been different. I guarantee it would have been different. Instead, he spent money on like 57 mutalisks he made today. Did not give them upgrades either. And the Mutas did good stuff. They killed a bunch of High Templar. They killed a bunch of Shuttles and Reavers. And they opened the way to the drop inside the main base of Bisu that allowed for the destruction of the entire main base of Bisu. Okay? So the Mutas weren't nothing. I'm not going to say they were the worst. But I just... Make like six fewer Mutas and get the upgrades for your Lings, man. I really can't believe those guys had zero attack at the end there. The Lings should have been just absolutely terrifying to Bisu in that final battle and they weren't like they were fine not like they showed up and died they were you know they're hitting stuff but just not doing as much damage as they should have and when you have and a fast attack speed every attack upgrade is so important massively important way more important to get plus three attack for lings than it is for ultras because of attack speed That was crazy. That was knock down, drag him out, insanely good stuff. Thanks again, RJB. If you want to support him, check him out on his YouTube channel. If you want to support this channel, you can join it by clicking the join button down below. One-time donations are available with the uh, the super thanks button. And also patreon.com slash falcon paladin. We almost mined this map out, too. So this is like the only base. These two bases, I guess we can't see the minerals because the game's over. But yeah, like every other base had been taken. I mean, this is the most bonkers blockchain game I've ever cast. Not that I've cast a ton of them, but this is this is the best one, without a doubt. End of the day, 422,000 points there from Larva, 444,000 points from Bisu. <laughs> Larva produced a thousand units today to the 400 of Bisu and got out killed on about a two to one ratio. Structures raised. Larva killed 94 buildings, lost 14, and lost. And in resources, I mean, it's really only 15,000 resources more over the course of a 54 minute game. And that's just not enough. Like 15,000 is more like a 30, 35, maybe a 40 minute game you can get away. Maybe. 35, I think, is about as far as you can get by having a 15,000 resource advantage against a Protoss opponent when you're Zerg. This is too much. It's too long. So, yeah, Bisu getting that center really allowed him to stay alive for as long as he did. This game started with a double proxy gateway in the center of the map. Let's just think about that for a minute. Just ponder where this game started and where it ended. Epic. Truly epic. <sighs> that was great. So yeah, stick around. I'm going to find out what happened to those mutas here. But uh, if you're not going to stick around, thank you so much for wa watching. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of... Starcraft Brood War Remastered. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.